Weaver's Fen is definitely one of the more underrated territories when it comes to loot. But there are a few items that I personally prefer Weaver's Fen over other territories. Those items being lemons, coconuts, and hardened crystal. Now, there are a couple locations that I personally like to go to specifically to farm for those items. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you those two areas and the routes that I like to run for them. All right, so to get us started, we are over here at Fenton Hamlet. Now, normally I will take the Polder Shrine down here, but you can also take the Mallory Shrine as well, whichever one you want to go with. But usually I take the Polders just so I can start down here. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to hit the first house here, move up, hit this grouping up here, rotate up, down, across, back up, and then that leaves us in a route to go on to the next area area so let's get started here and with this route uh, just like with actually my sugar run you can actually run this you know once an hour you can alternate between those two runs kind of depending on how you want to do it and even though I've ran this route multiple times I still can't remember exactly which house has which uh, so I usually go into each house to remember which ones actually have the loot inside. But in the Fenton Hamlet area here, most of the houses will have loot in there. There's maybe only two or three that don't have any loot or some that might only have loot on one level. So I just double check each one to be safe. All right, so we grab that one. We're going to head over this way and then there's actually going to be a little cache on the side here right next to this guy. So we'll go and grab this and like I said this uh, this route is going to be for hardened crystal obviously from the supply caches and then all of the provisions are going to give us an opportunity at getting some lemons specifically but uh, the coconuts are also going to come into play in season five uh, season five they're actually changing it so the banana parfait which is actually the con food uh currently it's a 48 con food next season it will be a 44 con food uh they're changing it so the seasoning blend is now going to be coconuts that you need for it so although coconuts aren't super high value it is still worth it to farm them up it's a little extra cash kind of just for farming the lemons really all right so we're gonna head up here all the way up so Fenton Hamlet has a decent amount of loot. It's a little bit spread out, but it's not too bad. And at the end, what I'm going to do is show you the exact amount of lemons and everything that we get from the run. And then also there's some other areas that if you have the time, I actually didn't have time to do it in this video, but if you have the time and want to, there are a couple other areas that I would recommend trying to run uh, if you're trying to farm up, you know, more lemons and stuff like that. But for the sake of today's video and because this is normally what I end up doing is hitting up these two locations and then I will alternate either with my sugar run or I might go you know do an OPR or something in between um, but it just kind of spaces out the time so then I can then uh, you know come back and just do the same kind of short route again so we're just hitting up these houses we already hit up those three we're gonna go over to this one and like I said some of the houses won't have anything in them but I still run into them anyways because I tend to forget and uh, you never know on occasion uh, AGS will shake up the loot and change a couple chests or add something or change something around uh, so especially after like a patch or something I will then go and double check and make sure everything is the same on some of those more common routes that I like to run all right so we're gonna go up in here and grab the loot up here first and then when we go outside there's actually going to be a stockpile that we'll go after but we'll grab this first i need to double check make sure yeah i think there's a stockpile all the way upstairs as well yep supply stockpile up here so we're gonna go grab this and then head all the way to the bottom and there's actually going to be a provision stockpile on the outside so we're gonna head all the way down and around the corner here, we'll get this guy out of the way so we don't have to deal with it. And we'll grab this. So here's kind of our first chance at some lemons. Let's see if we get lucky. 
Ah, 11 lemons, that's a pretty good pull. So some of the stockpiles actually can give you a decent amount of lemons. So it is worth it to hit up the stockpiles, especially. So if there are any that I miss and you notice it, please put it down in the comments so I myself can look as well as others who are trying to run this route. Uh, then we can all make the most out of getting the loot. All right, so this is one of the few houses that does not have anything inside. So we'll loop back out and around. And there are a few... Uh, portals in the area uh, that pop up on occasion if you do want to run those so just a little extra something to do uh, and in weaver's fen there's a lot of moats and various resources that you can go out and farm so weaver's fen it is a pretty underrated territory overall kind of similar to how morningdale is pretty underrated um, but you can actually get a decent amount of resources along the way on some of these runs so we have a provisions crate on the outside of this one here. Got a few more lemons. Get this guy out of the way. Keep on moving. All right, so we're going to head in here. Another little cache. Grab that. And then from here, we're actually going to cut over to the kind of church area. There's going to be some loot on the inside of that before we cut across kind of that open field there. So like I said, Weaverson is fantastic. You do have a chance at getting, you know, your uh, hardened crystal. I know it is a pretty rare craft mod to get, but you know what? If you end up pulling one on one of these runs, it makes it a very, very worthwhile run to go on. Um, and like I said, you know, it's the normal cooldown like other regular chests. It's going to be an hour long cooldown. And then you can come back and run the route again if you would like. So once we clear out those few in the church there, then we're going to head down this way. And there are a couple of chests kind of just like out in the open that are pretty easy to miss. I do sometimes miss them just because either I take a different route or I'm just not paying attention. So this is going to be one of those. We'll grab that. Get these guys out of the way. Grab the alchemy crate. So then you can see where we're at here. I'm going to cut through this way. We're going to go hit this house over here. Right on over this way. Grab the crate on the outside. Double check inside. Ooh, we got a star metal flail charm. That is actually another one that you can actually pull here that's worthwhile. That is, I'll show you here. That is actually the... I believe it's the Mending Vortex perk. So this is one that I actually was farming for a while. It's a fantastic perk to have on your flail, especially it's what I run on my healing flail. Um, I do highly recommend it. The price has come down quite a bit on these, but it is one of those craft mods that is for sure worth grabbing. I just kind of forgot that it actually can drop in Weavis Fun. All right, so that provisions was not very good. All we got was a little bit of milk. Not the best, but we'll keep on moving here. So the other craft mod, uh, as far as the weapon perks go, is you can actually get the Relentless Freedom mod. So again, depending on your server, it may or may not be worth much. Right now, the prices on a lot of stuff are just low because people are just waiting for Season 5. I know we've had the delay and it's frustrating, but we will get there eventually. We just need to be patient or continue being patient. And then once we get it, then you'll start noticing that some of these prices on some of these craft mods and resources are going to fluctuate and change a bit. All right, so we'll grab that one. I'm gonna head over here. And yep, there is one underneath here. And we'll cut back this way. And we'll go up these stairs here. Whoop, getting caught. All right, and this one, we should have to go all the way up. There's gonna be a stockpile here, but I know this guy. All right, we'll give him one of those. Start getting the chest. All right, so we got that stockpile. Now on to the other loot. There's no more in here. We'll drop on down, go into this house. And I'll show you on the map here just so you can see. We started here, jumped over, over to this one. And again, I check all the houses every single time, partially because my memory is terrible, but also because uh, there has been a couple times where AGS has changed up some loot. And I didn't know it because the online loot maps where it shows you the caches, they're not very up to date. And so it's really hard to utilize those to its fullest extent 
knowing that uh, the information is not always correct. Now, it does show you a lot of the locations, but there are a lot that actually are not shown. And so that's why no matter what, I always try to run and get, you know, get into each of the houses, check them and all that. But again, you don't necessarily have to do that unless there's a patch just because there really shouldn't be a change on something. But I do it again, primarily because I just have poor memory. Uh, so on the outside here, uh, you can see we're actually going to grab a few other chests. There's one there and then two more over here. And this one's kind of hidden here. I'll show you. So we got the alchemy crate here, but then right over here, there is a supply cache. All right, so that completes the Fenton Hamlet area. This doesn't have a ton of provisions, but it is pretty easy to come and farm. Like I said, you're able to also have that opportunity to potentially get the Hardened Crystal, or in my case, I got a Star Metal Flail Charm, which is pretty awesome because I will hold on to that. Either it'll go up in value or I'll end up utilizing it to craft my own uh, flail in the future. All right, so next we are going to be heading over to Navarro's kitchen. So all we have to do is follow this route here and there are gonna be some resources along the way. So when you yourself are running, definitely you know stop for any resources or star metal. I believe there's even a little bit of orichalcum further up there, um, but there's also, you know, there's various things that you can skin, you know, wolves. Uh, I think there's bears up here and then there should be some moat farm uh, or moat spawns here and there as well. So I'm going to head to Navarro's kitchen and then I will meet you over there. All right, so we made it over to Navarro's Kitchen, and Navarro's Kitchen is going to have the most of the provisions crates in a pretty small area, so we don't have to travel too far for it. And if you want to hit just one spot in Weaver's Fen, this is the spot I would go to because it is so quick and easy to come and farm it. So when we get here, there's also, like I said, some other resources that you can farm. Uh, so definitely look around for some of those if you are looking to just kind of make the most out of your run. We're going to clear some of this stuff first. And then start grabbing provisions. Now, there are going to be some non-provisions loot here. You know, some stockpiles and caches of other stuff. So maybe we'll get a hardened crystal. That'd be really, really lucky for the video. But it doesn't happen too often that I actually pull uh, the expensive stuff like that on the video. But I do pull them, obviously, when I'm streaming or just running it off stream. So hopefully your luck is great on these runs because I know that the sugar run has come in handy for a lot of people. And I've seen some people pull more sugar than I have on that run, so I love seeing that. All right, more lemons. We're doing pretty good on this run so far. 21 lemons. We'll see what it is by the end. So we kind of cleared out these two little spots here. I'll show you on the map again. So those two spots, and then we're going to cut over here. And there's going to be a little bit more in this area. Clear these guys out. We have another stockpile. Come on, give us another 10 plus lemons, please. Ah, seven, that's still pretty good. All right, then we're going to come down here. I can't remember. This is the spot that always throws me off. There's none actually in this little tiny area. So we're going to cut across, go over this way, see what we can get. There should be, I believe it's a regular supply stockpile over here. Take care of that guy, grab this, and then on to the last tiny little area over here, right over this way. So like I said, this area, this Navarro's Kitchen area, very, very easy to run. Super, super easy. There's not much that you have to fight. What you do have to fight isn't very strong, and you get a decent amount of provisions out of it. So let's see what we get. And no coconuts, no lemons. That is unfortunate. But we still did pretty good for the run. So that is Navarro's Kitchen. So like I said, we go from Fenton Hamlet. We do that route, clear that area, follow this road over to Navarro's Kitchen. And that is kind of the short route that I like to run for my lemons just kind of right off the bat. All right, so we finished up our run. So like I said earlier, we did end up pulling actually a star metal flail charm, which those used to be a lot more expensive than they are now, but it is one that I actually like pulling because I will sit on it. Either I'll use it or I will sell it. And again, it kind of depends on your server as well. The prices on Marama on most things have been dropping mainly just due to a lot of people waiting for season five. So either people are taking a break or those who are farming, there's just a lot of supply and not as much demand. So... The main thing we we're looking for though was the lemons 
So as many of you know, I do have my sugar run video and my sugar run video, uh, I went back and kind of counted the amount of provisions that you get. And although you do get maybe one or two more chests or one or two more provisions, uh, it is very, very similar as far as how many you're able to farm. It's just that they're more spread out. The sugar farm, everything is very condensed in a pretty small area. But for the lemon farm, it's just more spread out. But as you can see, 28 lemons is pretty good, to be honest. It is not that bad. On Marama here, they're averaging around 20 gold right now. That has kind of gone up and down depending on the day, the week, all that. But it is something that is a more of a pain to farm because you can't go out and like farm herbs, anything like that. You just have to go out and farm provisions very similar to sugar so if the sugar run's been working really really well for you i do highly highly recommend doing the lemon farm go do the sugar run come to the lemon farm maybe do an opr or a dungeon in between go back do it all over again and before long you're going to accumulate so many lemons and sugar that you'll be able to sell them on top of that like i said earlier as well coconuts are going to be more valuable next season so i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend selling them right now i would hold on to them see what happens next season and uh, kind of go from there whether you're going to sell them or keep them to craft so on top of that, what I wanted to also go over is let's say you wanted to extend this lemon run and go to a couple more spots. I'll show you the two spots that I would recommend or kind of the two areas that I would recommend. What you can do for my extended route is sometimes you will go further south, drop down here and you will hit up Perryville. Perryville doesn't have a ton of provisions, but it is something that you can go and hit. And then from there, I would go down to Carburg. I believe they're between these two areas. There's either three or four stockpiles for the provisions. It's just they're really spread out. So for the video's sake uh, and time's sake, it does take a lot longer to get there. So I do recommend those two areas. And then if you want to go even further yet, I would go south down in the Garuchin area. There's a bunch of uh, provisions down here, again, more spread out, but you can kind of farm this whole southern area and have some luck finding some various provisions and stuff like that because there is a lot of loot in Weaver's Fen. It's just very spread out. You have to kind of go more of a distance to actually get to some of them, but there are a couple areas where like the supply stockpiles and supply caches are a little bit more confined to a smaller area, and then the provisions kind of just come along with it. So like I said from the start, start with Fenton Hamlet, go to Navarro's Kitchen. If you want to extend further, then just kind of work your way south, hitting all the little kind of smaller settlement looking areas. And be, by the end, you'll actually accumulate a lot of lemons. It's just this route to do the full like kind of from Perryville south. Uh, it does eat up a lot of time. So I find that uh, because of the way I like to play, I don't like to stay in one territory for too terribly long, just farming one thing. I will go and hit the two areas that I first mentioned, the Fenton Hamlet and Navarro's Kitchen. Then I might go do a sugar run and then I might do an OPR or something like that and then kind of go back and do that same rotation and it kind of just helps to spread out the content so you're not just stuck doing one thing the entire time because I know for myself for farming it gets very very old very quickly. All right but that is going to do it for today's video so until next time I'll see you guys later. Thank you.